like, like I was saying, I just, I look around and I see the way things that work naturally, you know what I mean? And, I mean, naturally speaking, if you, if you wanted to kind of make guesses on what things were, you know, if these aliens do exist, they're going to be pretty much close to what things are naturally, you know, they're not going to be like, you know, all, all, they're going to have their issues too, you know what I mean? Well, exa- well, and again, you, I always say that we're again, mankind is a very mm, arrogant species because yeah. we tend to classify everything as we understand it, and we're not considering that life. Not all life forms have to be matter based. I mean, we say yeah. it does, but it's not true. Yeah. I mean, it's we only know the truths that we can possibly know via our own perception and our own experience. Right. But. You know, it's like I was saying to somebody years back when they said they had discovered a form of arsenic life. I said, you know, that goes counter to everything we could possibly believe because arsenic to us is a poison. Right. I said, yet they they believe they found an arsenic-based life form. I said, so it, it kind of goes to show you that you, you have to go way outside the box mm-hmm. to even think about it. Yep. I agree. They even have a... Uh... They're they're talking now about uh what was the name of that that moon that goes it it's it's that ice moon, um, about life being underneath the ice caps on that planet and possibly in the water because the the planet's just all water that's frozen over you know, so yep. so when you look at that you also have to ask yourself I mean, what kind of creature is that going to be or creatures you know, so well that. It's nothing we can actually really kind of wrap our heads around. Right. That's it's like it's very interesting because we're we only tend to perceive things as we know them. Mm-hmm. And it's you just you don't know. And in fact, I when I tell people when I say it's very possible that humanity could be a singularity because we are. We always, they always say that a computer echoes the human anatomy, and it does in many ways. But what if the human anatomy actually echoed a computer? Yeah. You have to, I always do that. I'll like flip it around and say, you know, we could be a, a biomechanical organism mm-hmm. because we define mechanics as we see it, mm-hmm. not as another type of existence would see it. I was having a conversation with Austin in the summer about this, and like there's an actual ufology cult following that goes way back and well into the 20s that actually believed in stuff like that. Um, And uh, like uh, Battlestar Galactica, the original one, the the people that were involved in making that TV series believed in it too. You know, I mean, they they really did. They they believed it 100, percent and that's why they came up with that show in the first place. Well, like I said, I think we need to put the brake on the thought process that we are the only form of intelligence. It's not, it's not realistic. Mm-hmm. And you've got to look at how the human how the human brain works, how it maps. Or mm-hmm. Are we not a good portion of it? What's stopping? block was put in play to prevent us from doing that because it's kind of like a computer you can put blocks in a computer that prevent them from accessing certain areas it it, it's very and i said to somebody if you look at the genetic makeup of like a strand of dna and you look at a strand of dna and see how it is actually what comprised it's comprised of it's actually it's actually a a superconductor and it oscillates like a superconductor (laughs) it's it's, it's like we, we have this freaking itty bitty freaking superconductor in every strand of dna i said it's just absolute madness that you would think that we didn't have the ability to be telepathic i think we're naturally telepathic mm-hmm. i believe it's been walked ourselves from it yep i think we're naturally able to do certain things and uh, but what yep. When when you bring that up, that that brings me to what um, I've had discussions about about what is supernatural and what is paranormal because a lot of people like to make stuff out like that's paranormal. In reality, it's not. It's a natural ability that we're being we've been given. You know what I mean? 
now you know why I hate certain words. Mm-hmm. I don't like the word psychic. I do not like the word paranormal. I really don't even like the word super nature because to me it's not really super nature. It's <laughs> it's more like nature that's been kind of kept down. Yeah, esoteric um, nature. <laughs> esoteric suppressed. nature. Yeah. Yeah, I mean exactly. and I you know I always tell people when they say how are you how are you capable of this and how are you capable of that and I kind of look at them and say well so are you. Yeah. <laughs> this is, I don't I was exposed to it as a very young child and for some weird reason it didn't trigger fear in me. Yeah. I was like most people it scares them and so they'll whether it be because of how you're raised what you're taught what your beliefs are whatever the reason it scares you to the point where you'll lock it away Mm -hmm. i said but you'll find that especially empaths empaths oh god when an empath doesn't know what they are they can end up institutionalized they can have a lot of big emotional problems because they don't understand that they're literally pretty much absorbing echoes of everybody else's feelings and emotions um they're they're absorbing that energy Mm. and they think it's their own and it's not so that's you know again you have to learn how to recognize that and (laughs) i mean it's it's true though i mean people i think are naturally we're, we're born to do certain things we are we have genetic predispositions to do certain things mm-hmm. um, in fact I've said that I really am a strong believer in epigenetics um, I said I really I, I mean I really think rather than reincarnation because I know a lot of people lean more in, lean into reincarnation I was like I don't know if we're reincarnated but I do believe in epigenetics mm-hmm. um, where pieces of each generation that preceded you you inherit that through your generic genetic code and sometimes it's flipped active and sometimes it's not um that's why you might have deja vu sometimes that is why you might have an experience where you remember something that's not really your memory that's the the thing that um when it comes to like all the genetics and everything the um i think what it is though is like it it's it, it comes down to uh it comes down to stuff like our receptors and everything, you know, and, th- and there's parts of the brain that aren't even explained yet, you know what I mean? And Absolutely. It has to do with our, uh, oh God, what is it? It's the gray matter. Nobody, nobody really even knows anything about that gray matter that's in the center of our brains, you know? Well, it's kind of like when they tell you that, you know, junk DNA, and I've said it for three decades, there is no such animal as junk DNA. Mm -hmm. The creator does not create junk. Okay, let's just put that out there and and really absorb that information. There is no junk in nature. Yeah. There is no... Every little particle of your body has some purpose. It's just a matter of defining what that is. Honestly, I think the Russians and the Chinese are freaking eons ahead of us when it comes to understanding. I mean, understanding different abilities that people can have. And, you know, like I said, even with even with being a medium or, you know, able to connect with energy, I don't think that's mystical. I think it's like it's like being good at basketball. You yeah. Know? <laughs> It's, it's just that's your gift you know some people are great with basketball some people are great pianists some people can connect to energy that's uh, their gift the one thing that gets me is like everybody trips out over uh remote viewing you know what i mean and uh they they uh are you there I'm here. Okay, and uh, they they make it out to be really a lot more than what it actually is. You know what I mean? Because like everybody has been talking about like astral travel and all that, and the only difference between remote viewing and the astral traveler is that the astral traveler traveler leaves his body, where the remote viewer stays in his body. You know. Um, uh, both are an extension of consciousness, mm-hmm. and that's where it. it you know, like I say, it's people, it's travelers who are accessing the grid. And that's what I've always called it. It's To me, it's the grid. Mm-hmm. And I say when I dream, 
when I'm having prophetic dreams, I always tell people I'm surfing the grid in my sleep. And when I'm in REM, my consciousness surfs the Akashic, the grid. I was like, that's why when I dream of future events, I can tell you when I'm having one of those dreams because my senses are all on fire. I was like, it's, I don't just see colors. My colors dance. Mm-hmm. I don't just smell with every little nuance possible. I don't just hear noises. I hear it on every frequency level. I said, there's a really strong, it's like you're not inhibited by your body. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like your body dulls things down. That, that... When I'm surfing, I just don't, I can't control it though. I don't, I always say I can, I can lucidly get myself out of it, but I can't control where I'm going or, or why. you know so it's it's i uh say i'm never shown like a beautiful grand event that's wonderful no 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 i get catastrophes every time (laughs) i uh whenever it comes to uh that right there um i i've noticed that a lot of people i talk to literally have no control over anything that they they become aware of that they have you know what i mean and like uh a lot of them for most of their life aren't even aware that they have the abilities you know oh no i'm aware not that i wanted to to be aware because trust me it's 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 something where it takes you years to get used to the fact that you cannot change what you've seen you can't there's an, and i've always questioned why am i shown it if i can't change it? and it, it took me years to finally settle down and say shown so you can prepare a path so you can calm people you're that voice of reason you know you're that you're that person who's supposed to to clean up the aftermath mm-hmm. where i'm left with it because i was like you know katrina hurricane katrina really what was i supposed to do with that (laughs) (laughs) what was i you know the tsunami over what what was i supposed to do go stand in front of the wave hold the cracked earth together i mean what are you supposed to do with that a school shooting what yeah how how am i you're not you're just not you're not meant to stop the event Mm -hmm. i think you're just meant to kind of be that voice of reason in the aftermath that's the one thing that uh that um old john has that is uh he's he's my partner on a wonderful world of uh weirdness and he he's one he's a healer he he can well first when it started out he could touch you and then now he can do it uh mentally you know and uh he he he's he he has a hard time understanding that he's a he's a a vessel you know what i mean it works through him it doesn't work he doesn't have the control you know what i'm saying yes it 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 works through you not for you (laughs) that's the best best way to define it yeah through you not for you um and it is a lot of times though something that is inherited like i said i come from a from a long lineage of seers did i know that when i first started no 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 in fact it was denied to me until i was an adult